normally, I know what it is, normally when I'm doing this, I'm driving to church. Oh, so yeah. I'm going down the road doing it. So <laughs> that's what it is. I'm not buying the wheelie. Hey Jenny, can I turn around yet? No. <laughs> Come on. Not yet. Hi. Thank <laughs> you. You owe me ten dollars. You're crying already. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Wow. Get back to my seat. Is that the bride there? Mm hmm. I know it's a shock to all of you that they're getting married. Isn't that something? <laughs> They've been working on this for a while, and we're really grateful that God has brought them together uh, because uh, as a cat pastor and counselor, it's been my privilege to work with them for a while and to see the love that they share with each other and the excitement they've had about this day coming up and what a joy it is to get to be a part of this kind of a ceremony. And I know you feel the same way as their family and friends. So. Welcome today, and thank you for being here, part of this type of ceremony. Um, I'm going to share a few things from God's Word, and I will make it brief. Uh, we have an unpredictable weather <laughs> over us right now, but we're going to have a great time. We want you to stay around and celebrate with them, and we're just going to have a joyful occasion today. Brian and Jenny, y'all start a brand new chapter of life today. Do you realize this? You've had many chapters in the past, and we've closed the last page on those, and here's a brand new one opening up. And you guys get to write that, a great big part of it. You're going to fill in the blanks on about what you decide to do as a couple together, as a husband and wife, and you get to share so many wonderful, exciting things together in the days ahead. And God has a great plan for that. If you think about a marriage like building a house, the first thing that has to happen is a strong foundation. And there is only one foundation. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us that there is no other foundation that can be laid than the one that already is there, Jesus Christ our Lord. And I know as I've talked with you two both that that's the hope and dream and the plan that you have to put Jesus Christ as the foundation of all that you do and to make Him the true source of strength and endurance for your marriage. 
God created marriage in the very first place. It's his idea. And I'm really grateful he did that, aren't you? <laughs> so when I think about all the wonderful things he says in Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, it says, it is not good that the man should be alone. I'm so grateful God decided that and then decided to make a woman to come alongside the man to complete him and to partner with him. In the Hebrew, it actually says that God caused a deep sleep to fall on man and took from his side to make the wife. It didn't say specifically a rib, which is interesting, because the idea is not the body part that's the most important thing, but it's the position that's the most important thing. It's from his side. Your wife is to be your partner. She's to come alongside, just under your arm to protect her and to surround her with your love and your care. And y'all will walk together side by side into the life that God has planned for you. The very first miracle that Jesus ever did in John chapter 2 was at a wedding. He turned the water into wine so that they could continue celebrating uh, the joyous occasion that they had that day. And so I want you to realize that Jesus is a huge part of what makes a marriage work. And I know that you are aware of that and that's your heart's desire that Jesus be the one who leads the way. Then you have to build something on top of that foundation, don't you? To have something. And that's where y'all get to have a great many decisions, deciding how your life together is going to look. But one of the things I know has to be a big part of this is love. And love is personified in Jesus Christ. He left everything in heaven to come here and die on a cross because he loves you and me. And because of that love, we get to love each other. 1 John 4, 8 tells us that God is love. And love is defined for us very clearly in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. This is what the Bible says. Love is patient. Love is kind. And you notice the first two things he says? <laughs> love is patient. Love is kind. God knows that we're not going to always be easy to live with. I'm, I'm sure y'all figured that out over the past few years. Uh, but we have to have that patience and that kindness to treat each other really well. It doesn't envy. It does not boast. It isn't proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It isn't self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs, which means it's forgiving. Gary Smalley said this very accurately. He said, every great marriage is the union of two really good forgivers. And that's absolutely the truth because we're gonna let each other down from time to time, but God's still there and we still love each other and we have to learn to forgive and support and reconnect and rebuild. And then listen to what else it says. It delights, it does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes and always perseveres. Love never fails. I love that. Those last few words speak about the durability of the structure you are trying to build together as a husband and wife. Notice it says that love always protects and that's the goal that y'all both have. Your marriage is an entity in itself and your actions are designed to protect that marriage and your heart needs to be to focus on what keeps this marriage healthy. Not what I want, not what you want, but what builds this marriage? What can make it strong and protect it? I know some of the things that protect weddings and marriages are communication, being open and honest with each other, being direct with each other, speaking your truth in love like Ephesians 4.15 tells us. Commitment is one of the things. That's what you're doing today, isn't it? You're making vows before God and this company and to each other. And those vows will keep your marriage strong even through the difficult times because we're saying to God, we're going to love you till the very end. Isn't that a great thing? That's the kind of thing where you can actually relax and be yourself in a committed relationship like that where you know that person's going to love me. They're going to be there for me throughout the rest of our days together. And then faithfulness. I've got to be faithful to you as my spouse if I'm going to have a protected home and a protected marriage, one in which trust can grow, one in which hopes don't fade, and one which can last and endure. And then I mentioned forgiveness a moment ago. We have to be able to forgive each other for the times when we don't live up to our own standards, much less the standards of God. It always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. That's what the love is that you're going to make today. And that's what you're actually vowing about 
this morning. And speaking of that, we're going to ask you to hand your bouquet off. And I'm going to ask you all to join right hands. It's like you're shaking hands because vows are a commitment we're making as a promise to each other. Uh, the Bible is very, very clear about vows. It says it's better that you don't vow than you vow and not pay. So I want you all to have that serious heart. It's a joyful occasion, but it's also a very solemn occasion. This is a very important time in the part of this ceremony. So Brian, as the initiator of the covenant, as the husband, I'm going to ask you to take the vow first. Follow after me. I, Brian. I, Brian. Take you, Jenny. Take you, Jenny. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love. To love. Honor. Honor. And cherish. And cherish. Till death shall part us. Till death shall part us. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. I thee wed. I thee wed. Now, Jenny, you follow after me as well. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Take you, Brian. Take you, Brian. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness or in health. In sickness or in health. To love. To love. Honor. Honor. And cherish. And cherish. Till death shall part us. Till death shall part us. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. I thee wed. I thee wed. And I understand that y'all are going to exchange rings today as a symbol of this commitment that you're making of the love that you share. So I'm going to take those at this time. With both of them. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate that. Find out where they're all located. <laughs> <laughs> they're good. It's traditional to talk about the rings for a moment because they're beautiful symbols. They're made out of a precious metal that doesn't tarnish. And that's supposed to represent the fact that your love is to be ever new, ever fresh, kept bright and shiny. And you have to work at doing that, don't you? Even the metals take a little polishing sometimes and our lives and our wedding and our marriage has to be polished up. They're also, excuse me, circular in nature. They're not a bar with a beginning and an end. They just keep going forever. And that's the, represent the eternal nature of the love that you two are pledging to each other today. And again, Brian, because you're the initiator of the covenant, I want you to take Jenny's ring and then respond, I do to this. Brian, do you give this ring to her whom you've taken as your lawfully wedded wife in token of the love with which you will cherish her and the fidelity with which you will keep the sacred vows that you have made? I do. Put it on the third finger of her left hand. Very nice. And then Jenny, taking his ring. Jenny, do you give this ring to him whom you've taken as your lawfully wedded husband in token of the love with which you will cherish him and the fidelity with which you will keep the sacred vows that you have made? I do. Good. Put it on third finger. It's his left hand. Push hard. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Honey. Can I help you? Sometimes things can be stubborn. <laughs> can you give it on me? Okay. All right, we're good. That's good. <laughs> There's another special commitment that we're going to be making today, and I'm going to turn it over to Brian at this time to do that part of the ceremony. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read what's on Brian's heart. How about that? <laughs> It's only by God's grace that I've had the joy of watching you grow up over the last six and a half years. In that time, I've come to love you and to think of you as my own daughter. Therefore, I vow to not leave you, but to be there even through the hard times. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> to always try to advise, to guide, and to comfort you based on scripture, and to listen to you even if we're not making a late Panda Express run. <laughs> As a token of these vows, I would like to give you this. Make sure I got it right. 
Oh, I gotta turn around. I'm mad at you, you made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> The spirit of commitment that is reflected in these vows today is exemplified beautifully in the words of Ruth in Ruth chapter 1. It says, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. Because of the vows that you have made, we're also going to have a demonstration of something that's very important. You may have heard of a ceremony of sand. I'm going to explain a little bit about that. And then we're going to listen to a song that expresses something that's on Brian and Jenny's heart. We're gonna stand back over here and I get Brian over here and Jenny here. There are three containers of sand on the tray today. One of these, the gray one, represents Brian and his individual life. The brown one represents Jenny and her life. And the white sand will represent the Holy Spirit. And as part of the ceremony, I'm going to pour a little bit of the white into the bottom of this jar. That'll represent the foundation of their marriage and their home. Brian will pour in a little bit of his to represent his individual life and Jenny some of hers to represent her individual life. And then we will pour in all three together mingled to fill up the jar to show that when God puts a family together, they are inextricable from each other. For the remainder of their days, they are solidly kept together and bound together in ways that we cannot take apart. So while we're doing that part of the ceremony, I want you to listen to the words of this very special song that Brian and Jenny want you to hear. Okay, I'll go first. It's just going to be that way. It's okay. It's Brian. We got plenty of time. We just knocked a bug in there, so it'll be immortalized. <laughs> Now, all three of us, just very slowly, very easily pour down. <laughs> I'm going to pray now for this new union that has been brought together today. Heavenly Father, how I thank you for the love that you've given to Brian and Jenny, for the time that they've taken to get to know each other so deeply, so well. 
and for the power of your Holy Spirit that has directed them and brought them to this place today to create this new union. I'm asking for your Spirit's blessing and leadership and protection over the home that's created today. And Father, I ask that you walk with them daily, that you guide them by the truth of your word, and that you give them an everlasting love for one another. We thank you for all these things made possible by the love that's ours in Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. 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 And now by the authority given to me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Brian and Jenny Beard. <laughs> Now 